Many Western countries have become quite difficult places to have a decent standard of living if you are a pensioner or a retiree on a fixed income. An answer to that is to move to somewhere like Asia. So in this video, we're gonna take a closer look at what you have to do if you want to move out and retire in Malaysia. We're going to look at the costs, what kind of income you need, the tax situation, accommodation, what's the healthcare like, and all these kinds of things. Okay, so who would be a good candidate for moving out to Malaysia? Well, well, basically anyone from a Western country, the US, Canada, UK, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, countries like this, countries that tend to have pretty high taxes, have a very high cost of living, have high rates of inflation over the last couple of years. A lot of these countries tend to have aging populations as well, unfavorable demographics that's putting a lot of cost pressures on funding their pensions. So if you're finding it a little bit tough, if rent is getting too expensive, if it just costs too much money to go down to the pub and have a beer with your mates, if you just have a really uh, not a great standard of living there, you can move to somewhere like Asia where the cost of living is a lot less and you can have a lot higher standard of life for the money that you're going to put into it. So if you're not working anymore and you're living off a fixed income, so it might be a pension, it might be some investment income such as rental income or dividend income, you are probably finding at the moment that your cost of living, the growth in your expenses is far outpacing the growth in your income. So that becomes a problem for some people. But what you can do is you can take that income, move to somewhere like Malaysia that we're going to talk about in this video, where your dollar will just go a lot further. You will be pleasantly surprised about what you can get for your money out here in Malaysia. All right, so depending on how long you're going to want to spend out here, whether you want to make it a more permanent arrangement or just come up for short periods of time will dictate what visa you want to go for as well as how much money you want to put into it and your income to satisfy certain eligibility criteria. So the main visas for moving out to Malaysia are the MM2H, the Malaysia My Second Home. There is also a Sarawak version of the MM2H and there is a Sabah version of the MM2H on the way. For the MM2H, the broader Malaysian program, you need to demonstrate that you have an income of 40,000 ringgit a month. I'll put some conversions down below. That is quite a lot of money, but we also know that they're going to lower this eligibility criteria. A while back, they increased the criteria and applications just dropped off a cliff. They dropped by about 90%. So now the Malaysian government has come out and said that they are going to look at this program again. They're going to lower the criteria. We're not sure what that's going to be yet, but we'll bring that news to you when we get it. So when the Malaysian government brought out these new rules for the MM2H and up the income requirement to 40,000 ringgit a month, a lot of people moved over onto the Sarawak MM2H, which is commonly referred to as the S. MM2H, but not to be confused with a Sabah MM2H. The beauty of the Sarawak MM2H is that you only had to demonstrate 7,000 ringgit a month, a big difference compared to the regular MM2H. For the Sarawak MM2H, you have to stay in Sarawak, which is in Borneo for 30 days in a year, and then after that, you can move to anywhere and live anywhere in Malaysia for the rest of the year. For the regular MM2H, you have to stay in the country 90 days, each year to keep that visa active. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of these visas here. If you wanna find out more about that, we've already made videos on these, so I'll put cards up above where you can find out more about the MM2H and the S MM2H. Another visa option for the more well-heeled retirees is the premium VIP visa. So this visa has a similar income requirement to the MM2H, 40,000 ringgit a month or 480,000 ringgit per year. And this visa is more of a premium visa, as it says in the title, and it's gonna get you 20 years access to the country. So that's definitely a long-term option if you've got a bit more money and you wanna secure your future in Malaysia for the long term. These visas are the most common for people who wanna come out here and set up more of a permanent arrangement. If you are a retiree who just wants to come up here part of the, if you wanna fly north for the winter or south for the winter, depending on which side of the globe you're coming from, well, you might not even need one of these more longer term, more structured visa programs. The beauty of it is many people can get 90 days on arrival as a tourist in Malaysia, no questions asked. So for people who wanna come up here for a shorter period of time, they don't necessarily wanna live here all year round, they might just wanna come up for a little while then move on to somewhere else. Well, coming here under a tourist visa, 90 days on arrival can be a very good option. It has no cost. You don't have to demonstrate that you're making a certain amount of ringgits every year. So you can come here, stay for your 90 days, and then you can go to Vietnam and stay there for 90 days. And then if you want, you can move on to Thailand or the Philippines, or you could just 
go home if you have had enough of travel for the time being. So that is a very good option that people should definitely consider and probably is the best way to come out here initially. Come here, see if you like it first, spend three months here, and then once you've been here for a while, you'll know if you wanna make it more of a permanent thing and get onto one of the more structured visa programs like the MM2H. All right, how much does it cost to live in Malaysia? Well, according to Nomad List, we refer to this a little bit. It's just a really handy yardstick for uh, comparing the cost of living. I'm not making these numbers up. Here it is, you can see for yourself. According to this, you can live in KL, which is a big commercial center. It's the most expensive part of the country, but you can still live here for 913 US dollars every month. Now you can live here a lot cheaper than that. You can also spend a lot more than that. It's just up to you how you like to live. If you want to, li want to live in a nice new condo or if you want to live in more of a local style hotel. So then you've got to ask yourself, how much is it costing you to live in your home country? Can you live in your home country for 900 US a month? Some people might be able to if they have their house paid off, but many won't. And the ones that don't have a house paid off are probably struggling quite a lot with rent getting so expensive, food getting so expensive and so on. So if you have a pension, if you have dividends, if you have rental income, if you have a business, then you can run online and you can bring that with you. Then you can come out to Malaysia, live here for your 913 US dollars a month, call it a thousand, and you can have a very good lifestyle here. It's a very modern, very efficient city. Well connected to the rest of Asia, it really does have a lot going for it. Okay, so we'll take a brief look at taxes now. Well, if you're a retiree, this might be less of an issue for you. A lot of countries don't tax retirement income, but it just depends where you're going. You have to look at their particular rules there. If you have other income like dividends, rental properties, if you have a business, things can get a little bit trickier potentially. So what you have to look at, there's a few things here. Uh, how you're going to be taxed will depend on which visa you're going for, is there a tax carve out in that visa or will you be taxed under the broader Malaysian Income Tax Act? How long will you be going for? How long will you be spending in Malaysia? Will Malaysia become your tax residency and will your home country agree with that assessment? Will they fight over who wants to tax you? And then is there a treaty involved and then what happens then? So there are many variables that come into play. I know it sounds complex and it can be, but it doesn't have to be. The answer to all this is that no matter what your situation is, no matter how your home country determines you to be a, whether you're a resident of your home country or whether you become a non-resident of your home country, whether Malaysia determines you uh, to be a tax resident of their country. No matter where you fall in all of this, there's always a way to structure things so that tax isn't going to be too much of a concern for you. So we can help you to work your way through that. If you're interested in getting some advice on there, head over to offshoreinasia.com, book in a consulting call, and we'll help you clear a few things up on the tax front. Okay, let's talk a little bit now about health. Now, I guess the first thing that I'll mention here is that Asia tends to encourage a really active lifestyle. It's very different to the lifestyle that you'll have in somewhere like LA or most cities in Western countries. Not everywhere, but a lot, a lot of cities in the West will be very uh, car dependent. You'll drive from here to there to there. You won't get much exercise unless you force yourself to do exercise by going to the gym or going to the pool or walking or running, whatever it may be. But if you're just living a normal life, if you're very busy and don't have time to do this other stuff, like going to the gym, then you're generally going to be living a less active lifestyle than what you will be in Asia. And when I say less active, I'm talking about how physically active you are. You're going to have a much healthier lifestyle in Asia because you're walking everywhere all the time. You might get a scooter if you stay here a bit longer, you might even get a car. But for most people, they will just be walking and getting around on the MRT and the LRT and so on. You hear stories all the time about people who come out here and just lose a bunch of kilos straight away just because they're walking all the time, they're so active all the time. So for a lot of people, that will be quite attractive as well. Especially as you get older and these things become more important, being much more physically active as a senior citizen is going to be a great thing for you as you get older. I think most people will agree with that. And at times when you do need healthcare, Malaysia has some excellent hospitals, some of the best in Asia, and world class really. This isn't the third world, guys. The standard of living here is very high. The standard of healthcare is very high. You don't have to worry about that at all. If you want to alleviate some of the concerns about having to 
uh, pay for healthcare, you might consider taking out health insurance. That's something that you can determine for yourself. But either way, whether you have insurance or whether you have the money to pay for your hospital visits, you're not gonna have any problems in Malaysia. If you're Australian or a New Zealander, it gets even better because you can just jump on a plane, fly down back home, get your Medicare if you're Australian. There are conditions with that involving whether you can get Medicare and how long it stays active overseas. I'll put a card up above, we made a video about that. But that's another option for those people who don't live too far away. On to accommodation now. Well, Malaysia has a high level of stock of very nice condos and they're building new condos all the time. There's actually quite a large oversupply here. But that means that rents are very affordable. So you can rent a very nice condo here for seven or 800 US dollars a month. You can spend a lot more than that. You can also spend less than that if you wish. But if you wanna live in a condo building that has all the mod cons, like your gym, your pool, all that stuff, good security, you can do that very affordably here. If you wanna move a bit further out, get out of KLCC, you can save a lot of money again. If you wanna save even more money, if you're not really too fussed about having all the mod cons, you can rent an apartment in a local style, sort of no frills accommodation building, living like the locals essentially, nothing wrong with it, just a, you know, a lot more basic compared to having a new condo. You can do that for three to 400 US dollars a month. So if money is a concern for you and you're not too fussed about having a, a, a nice new condo, if you just want something basic that you'll, um, I guess, feel happier in knowing that it's not costing you too much, then you can do that as well by taking out a long-term lease in a more of a local style apartment building and just living a no frills, basic, but still good lifestyle. It's up to you, it just depends how you like to live, how much money you've got and how you like to spend your money. There's something here for everyone. That's pretty much it for the video guys here. Just to summarize the broader points, Malaysia offers a very nice standard of living. It's up to you how much money you wanna spend. You can spend uh, probably 3,000 a month here if you want. I'm sure you can. I wouldn't know how to spend that much money, but if you don't wanna spend that much money, you can spend 1,000 a month. You can even still live here on six or 700 a month if money is a big concern for you. All of these things are possible, it just depends how you wanna do it. Now, if you wanna learn more about this, if you wanna learn how to do it, if you're interested in the visas, the taxes, if you just want some help getting out here and getting set up, let us know. You can head over to our website and book in a call or drop us an email there. If you're living out in Malaysia and you wanna share your experiences there, please drop a comment below. We'd really love to hear everyone's stories. Other than that, thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.